Hello, this is not a spring chicken. The big news, of course, today is, oh wait, should we go up or should we go down? Well, the market, yes, we're talking about the financial markets, are just a bit topsy and turvy ever since, well, what, France had a run on all the banks, London's rioting, France is going to Germany to probably get some money, and France, yes, bought Italian bonds because I think they thought Italy was not as in bad of a shape as they were. So Italy, France, the UK, Greece, oh yeah, not to mention the U.S. and our financial markets. Boy, I could say a lot of things about that. Well, for now, we're going to bring all the cam on with comments on the headlines of today. And while no one wants Obama to run for re-election, even the Democrats, it's all over for the Republicans and George Bush. I know. He's going to make it. He's going on vacation right now. Then he's going to take a nine-day bus tour across areas that the stimulus money has helped to show people how much the stimulus worked and that we need to have a new stimulus program, but George Bush and the Republicans won't allow it to happen. I know they, they keep trying to commit. I mean, uh, here's, I think, one of the, one of the really left-wing broadcasters. Somebody must tell that young man that he's not running against George Bush, he's running against himself. He, he and nobody not, wants him. Well, he still doesn't realize he does. They said that he, uh, they said he is, he is so out of touch that they're beginning to think that these people that left weren't, didn't leave voluntarily, they think he fired them all because they were all telling him you got to stop. Ooh. And they said Geithner is a yes man. Geithner basically, won't, Geithner says, well, we got to, you know, Republicans are responsible. Geithner is said violating all the rules of being the head of treasury. Head of treasury is supposed to be nonpartisan, and he goes on a partisan attack every time he opens his mouth. I know, he is supposed to be. I heard people last night trying to defend him, saying, well, he's actually a nice man. I've known him for a long time. And then when the guy said, he's a complete, he's a complete idiot. He said, this guy, uh, okay, here's one. He said he has to do this to count to one. <laughs> yeah, that's how stupid he is. He can't do his, he couldn't do his taxes. He didn't pay his taxes. <laughs> and he can't count, and yet he's the head of treasury. Maybe that's what you have to do. Remember we said all those czars that didn't even know, well, let's just see, like the car czar didn't even drive a car. I know. There's right. no one involved in his business that knows what they're doing. But they've all read books. I, 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 okay, here's a good one, you know, leapfrog with troop. Last night they were doing a, where they, uh, this was on a show with Democrats being running the news show. I was watching it on one of the non-right-wing channels that supports Obama. And they have a woman that runs a, a, a small business and her husband's small business. And they're telling, and they got one of Obama's people on. The problem was is that you people don't know what you're doing. They said if you hire people, the more people you hire, the more money it puts into the market, and you create a market for what you're selling by hiring people. And she said, we don't have any money. And they said, well, then you should go borrow money to hire people because that's how you get, that's how you create wealth in this nation, not like, the, not like you've been taught to do it. They said, the way to do it is you hire people that you know you're going to need down in the future, and that will enable those people to go out and buy other products, and uh -huh. in return, the money gets back to you. And they said, well, she's pointing out the fact, my husband runs a small concrete refurbishing company, and now he has to put up signs two months in advance that he has, he's doing concrete work in order to give the people in the neighborhood a chance to ask for an environmental impact report to be done, because they've now said concrete work is now an environmental hazard. Yeah. yeah, one regulation after another, they said specifically that she said that President Obama is the friend of every mom and pop business in this nation. And oh, uh, really? You know, you know, he said if you're making, if you've got $250,000 income, you're not a small business person. You're one of those people that should be paying your fair. He said that every, virtually every mom and pop store in the country makes that kind of money a year. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, no, they don't. We know that only people that should be paying their fair share of taxes made that kind of money. I mean, my father, in a bad year, brought home $250,000. Yeah, and then he also put out a lot of money, too, to he keep the business running. He would spend more money. He would spend more on the houses that he was doing. That's why he was working, like, four or five jobs. And my mother would bring home tons. In a bad year, my mother brought home that kind of money. Mm -hmm. That's talking 50 years ago in bad years. Yeah, but aren't they talking about after taxes? No, they're talking, they're talking what you make. 
Yeah, because yeah, small businesses, um, unless you're doing really well, it's like they the margin. Like I grew up in the supermarket industry, but it's the margin was like three percent. Yeah, and you're buying the inventory that you're purchasing counts towards. You could have a a million dollars a year in inventory, and that means you're not paying your fair. But it means. The inventory basically is perishable. It may not last for a mm -hmm. month, but it doesn't make any difference to the Obama people. They got, they're doing, they, they're, they read books and the book said this is what you should do. But the problem is that nobody that wrote the books has ever worked. Oh, so they don't know. It's all an experiment. And Asian stock markets lower after Wall Street tumble. But don't worry, even though they were lower again this morning. We are going through the roof on uh, the market, on the on, uh, stock market today. You know, I, I love it to see Spain is collapsing, uh, as Portugal is collapsing, Greece has collapsed, Italy is collapsing, France is now on the verge of having a massive bank crisis, but the markets are roaring. <laughs> okay, Imagine so, okay, that. I'm going to tell you what it is. You don't want to listen, but there is a thing on Wall Street called an inverse program. When the market starts to go down, they flip it to where you're seeing what the market is going down, not going up. They said, well, why don't they do that on the other side? Because it doesn't work that way. It's a computer program that they basically, it's a naughty little secret that people know about, but you're not supposed to know about it. If the market starts to go down a lot, they don't necessarily flip the switch to kill the market. They flip the switch to turn the figures around. So say, well, this how the hell is that company that's declared, you know, bankruptcy, you know, up 180 points today? Because they're down 180 points. You think that that our banks who are in a, ver in a massive collapse yesterday, today have turned around and, and making profits for the year? <laughs> no, because they flip a switch and that 30% that, 30 that, that, uh, that uh, Citibank was losing all of a sudden becomes a 30% profit, you know, that their people are buying the stocks. And British police out in force as violence finally subsides and Democrats admit that Bush and the Republicans were responsible for the riots. Oh well, yeah, because they started, they started Great Britain on the way to hurting the middle class and the lower class. Oh my God! They said that the reason why the riots are is because the wealthy are basically not paying their fair share. Uh, I can remember Sir Lawrence Olivier coming over to the United States and doing toothpaste commercials and he had false teeth really? because he didn't, he, they taxed him 110%. I remember a boxer going to Great Britain to fight for the middleweight championship in the world and had to sell his championship belt and all his jewelry to leave the country 110% of what he made to work in England. That's why they don't want to work in England because the taxes are so bloody high. I know, um, okay, uh, here's one, how wealthy. I know a family in England that lives on a big estate that can't afford to fix the hole in the roof of their house because the business is non-existent. They, do, they run a bridal business and no one can afford to get married. So therefore, even though it's a big manor house and a big, big everything, they don't have any money. But they're the people, I, I can tell you flat out, that um, they tried uh, last night to burn their place down. Yeah, they threw firebombs at the at the manor last night. What? Yeah. Why? Because they're wealthy. They're wealthy. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're wealthy. They can't afford to put fuel in the car to go to town, but they're wealthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not wealthy. They can't. They and they're, they're having to do all the work themselves. They can't hire staff because the, there's no business but a court. But they were, they're so wealthy, we've, we're, we're going to teach the wealthy in our country, they can't do this to us. So they threw a couple of Molotov cocktails at their building. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're very unhappy about that because they're, they're like um, 20 miles from the nearest fire department. <laughs> but they do have a, a lake on the property, so they were able to put the thing out with the, they got a, the old fashioned pumps from the lake. And, but they still did, uh, and more damage was done to the place than it cost to fix the roof of the house. Oh, sheesh. Yeah, but luckily they have somebody that has this, you know, they know somebody that can afford to, to do a new paint job and stuff, though. Of course, they have to do the painting, but. Right. But they, somebody else has to pay, you know, they got to get somebody to pay for all the paint that's going back on the property because, well, if you, if you had to cut out honest police officers, 
well, where they lived, there weren't any police officers to begin with. They're 20 minutes away. They're 20 so. minutes away from everybody. So it wouldn't have made any difference. But they picked, they picked the wealthy people's estates outside of London in those cities in order to, we're, we're going to teach these wealthy people. And then last night, I mean, my Democrats, these are just kids. They're, they're rebelling because of the fact that they know that uh, George Bush and the Republicans convinced the British government that they had to do cutbacks and give the money to the wealthy. The wealthy don't have any money. In their they don't money. have the money. That's why they I mean, don't people, live. <laughs> You'd think that Sean Connery lives in Malagra, Spain. A lot of those British actors live out of the country because they're, they're, they're very nationalistic. They'll come into England to work and then they leave because they can't afford to live in the country. And men to California amusement park over a homophobic slur on photo. Of which I've never been, I haven't seen anybody say what the what this slur was, and I've never shown the photo. So therefore, basically, it could have been, you know, what it amounts to is that they can they'll sue you for anything in this country. I mean, you know, actually, they said I I remember the okay. Here's what uh, when I was young, Milton Berle met the uh, Russian great director Sir Guy Eisenstein, Sir Guy. Basically, or Sergei Eisenstein, he used to wear we used to wear the royal purples and all that stuff. And I I was there at this function with my grandmother and my father. And Milton Burrow walked up and he said, uh, "I'm Milton Burrow." And he's and and uh, and Milton he'd known Milton Burrow because he'd seen all the Milton Burrows from Rebecca Sunnybrook Farm and all this stuff. And he said, "I'm gay." And Milton Burrow said, "I bet you are." <laughs> <laughs> so that would be called a racial slur today. And a Monty bubbleism from the Mark Twain of the Animal Kingdom. Okay, uh, that you you have to be careful that a lot of times when somebody is saying something negative about a politician, that person is actually working for the politician. <laughs>